Hi class, uh, welcome to your first lecture in section 1.1 and it's talking about limits and a, what it's going to do is it's going to show you a numerical and a graphical approach to solving limits. So what you're going to notice is at least initially um, with these limits is that we're going to look at like brute force ways to solve it, you know, plugging in numbers and then looking at the graphs and then what we're going to do later on in later sections, I'm going to show you like the tricks to be able to evaluate limits, like some of the algebraic methods. Okay, so first off, um, what exactly is a limit? So let's consider this function. So we have f of x is equal to x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. Okay, so what is f of 3, right? Like if you were to plug f of 3, if you were to plug 3 into this function, okay, you would get 3 squared minus 9 over 3 minus 3. You would get 9 minus 9 over 3 minus 3. You would get 0 over 0. Okay, so it's like undefined, right? Like you can't divide by zero here. But you'll notice in calculus, and you'll hear me talk about this a lot in the coming weeks. This, whenever you have a zero divided by zero, this is what's called indeterminate form. Indeterminate form. Another way, like, let me show you what the graph looks like here. Okay, so if you were to break this out, right, like this factors into x minus three over x plus three. And you'll notice that these cancel. And so this function here, okay, this looks like the graph of x plus 3. It's just you cannot have x be equal to 3. So if you were to graph this, right, it would just look like a straight line, okay. And forgive, I'm a little off here, like this, okay, just with a hole in it, okay, at when x is equal to 3. And so what limits want to do is limits want to look at, okay, not what exactly is happening to the function at x equal to 3, but limits want to look like, hey, where does the function look like it's going, okay? So when x goes to 3 from above, okay, and x goes to 3 from below here, where does it look? Where does it just look like the function is going, okay? So it looks like the function. So it looks like f of x goes to the value of 6, okay, as x goes to 3, okay? Not like what exactly is the function when x is equal to 3, right? Because I just can't plug that in here. But where does it look like the function is going, okay? And that's the, that's the whole point of limits here. So let me give you a formal definition. So a limit, okay, as x approaches some value a, okay, like here x is approaching the value 3, Okay, the limit of x of x of limit of f of x is equal to some number l, and it's written as the following. Okay, the limit as x goes to a of our function. So looking here like this, it's the limit as x goes to three of this x squared minus nine over x minus three is equal to some number. And looking back here, we're looking and we're saying, okay, it, it looks like the value is going to six. Okay, so this is just how it would be written instead of with the a and the l. So if all values of f of x are close to l for values of x that are sufficiently close but not necessarily equal to a, okay, the limit l, if it exists, must be a unique real number. And that's what we're seeing here, okay? As you get closer and closer to x is equal to three from both sides, the graph is getting like really, really close to the value six. And that's what limits do. Where does it look like the fun function or graph is going? Okay, so as x approaches a, all right, the limit of f of x is l. If the limit from the left exists, so that's from below, so this is called the limit from the left, coming from the left, and the limit from the right exists, and both are real numbers. So these are what are called one-sided limits, okay? So if the limit from the right, from above, of the function is equal to some number l, and the limit from below, okay, of the function is equal to l, okay, they're all equal to the same number, then what you're going to notice here, what we're able to say is that the limit, general limit, x is goes to a of f of x, is equal to l. So like to put in this context here, if you look at the limit as x goes to 3 from above of this function, from the right, so as x goes to 3 from above, it looks like the graph is going to 6. And the limit of f of x 
as x goes to 3 from below, from the left. It looks like the function, the graph, is also going to 6. Okay, then we can say the general limit. is equal to 6 as well. So for a limit to exist, the one-sided limits from below and above have to exist and be equal to the same thing. OK, so there's a couple ways you could do this. Um, you can solve it numerically, OK, or you can solve it graphically. So I'm going to show you numerically. So we're only going to do one example in my lecture here of numerically because it's, it's like a brute force way of finding limits. And it's not really how we're going to do limits going forward. Okay, so if you consider, consider consider my function here, okay, so going back, just this f of x is equal to x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. Let me write that here. So the way you could brute force numerically solve this, okay, so let's see as x approaches 3 from the left. Okay, so when I say from the left, that means from values below 3. So what you're going to do is you're going to take values less than 3, and you're going to plug them into your function. And you're going to keep getting closer. Look at, look at these numbers. You're going to see what happens as x gets closer and closer and closer to 3. So like when I plug 2 into this function, I get the value 5. When I plug in 2.5, I get 5.5. To plug in 2.9, I get 5.9, and so on. And look what happens. You can obviously see that, look, as x gets closer and closer to the number 3, the function is getting closer and closer to the number 6. Okay, So thus it appears that when you look from below, from the left, that the limit of f of x is equal to 6. And you can do the same thing from above. right? So next, let x approach 3 from the right. So what you're going to do, notice it's like the flip of this. You're going to pick values that are above 3, and then you're going to plug in numbers that get closer and closer and closer to 3. And when you take these numbers I have here and plug them into the function, so like when you plug in 3.0001 into the function, which is really close to 3, you get 6.001. Okay, so it looks like it appears that x goes to 3, as the limit as x goes to 3 from above or from the right of f of x is equal to 6. So again, since the one-sided limits, So the limit as x goes to 3 from below of f of x is equal to the limit as x goes to 3 from above of f of x. That's equal to some number here, l, which in this case is 6. Then the general limit, limit as x goes to 3 of my function, is equal to 6. So I don't necessarily think this is a great method for solving it here. It, it's you know, it's arduous. If we actually plug these numbers into our calculator, it would take us a while to do this. So we're going to need better methods for solving. Like going back here, I think even, even looking at the graph is an easier way. So that, that's what we're going to focus on um, a little bit more in this section here. All right, so let's try this one here. Okay, so consider this function, the function f given by this. Okay, so f of x is equal to uh, 1 divided by x minus 2 plus 3. Okay, so you see here we got a rational function. Um, we should be able to graph this, right? We should remember how to graph something like this um, from pre-calculus. Okay, and let's find each of the following limits if they exist. All right, so we want to find the limit as x goes to 3. And then I want to find the limit as x goes to 2. And I want to talk about if they exist. Okay, so let's just graph this. So first off, you should see that there's a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 2, right? Like I can't plug that in. All right, so like if you plug 0 into this, right, um, just to get the um, uh, y-intercept, if you plug 0 into this, you know, you get uh, negative 1 half plus 3, you get 2.5. So here's 1, 2. And you're going to notice the graph. It's going to look like this. OK, so really what you're doing here, if, if it helps to remember this, right, like the parent function from pre-calculus is 1 over x. 
And so you're moving the graph of one over X up three spaces, and then you're shifting it to the right two. That's really what's going on here. All right, but this is what our graph looks like. Okay, so you can actually see there's a vertical asymptote and, and, and you can also hopefully see that there's a horizontal asymptote too. You know, you can remember from your pre-calculus ways to figure out how there's a horizontal asymptote, right? Like the degree of the um, uh, denominator here is higher than the degree of the numerator, right? So this goes to zero, but then you have the plus three. So then that's how you get the horizontal asymptote at three. Okay, so let's do that numerical approach, right? So the first question was here, you know, limit as x goes to three, okay? So if you were to just pick values that are getting closer and closer to three from below, you can kind of see where this looks like it's going, right? It looks like it's going to four. Okay, you do the same thing from above. And look, you're getting super, as you get closer and closer to three from above, you're getting closer to four, okay? Thus, you can see here that the limit as x goes to three of f of x is equal to four. What's interesting, and hopefully one thing you picked up on this, so this was our function, Like if you just plug three into this, you get four. So like if 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 the value exists in the domain, okay, um, and it's a, and it's some easy function like this, okay, because I'll do examples where it doesn't. Um, you can just plug it in and evaluate it. That's not always the case, but in this case, it's just one of those things that we noticed happen. So if you look here. Um, you know, you can just observe here, like here's x is equal to three, and this was the graph I said, that look, as you come from three below, shh, it looks like you're going to the value four, and if you come from three above, shh, it looks like you're going to the value four. So this limit, as x goes to three of f of x, has to be equal to four, it exists. All right, let's look at two, okay? And, and you're gonna do this, you know, the brute force way. So I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna plug in values of x going to two from below. And you can see what happens here is it blows up really quickly, okay? It, it, looks, like, it looks like as you get closer and closer and closer to two from below, all right, the graph is decreasing without bound, okay? So what that means is it's going to negative infinity. And if you do the same thing from above, you're gonna notice it increases without bound. Okay, and so it goes to positive infinity. So thus that our limit, little bit of a little bit of a typo here, little overlap here, but the limit does not exist because the one-sided limits go to different places. And you can see that, right? Like if you look, instead of looking at the chart here, if you look at as as x goes to two, so we're looking as you go to two from below, it looks like my graph is shooting downward, decreasing without bound. And as you go from x, if you go from to x is equal to two from above, it looks like my graph is whoa shooting up, up, up. It's increasing without bound. Okay, so our one-sided limits do not agree. Okay, they go to different numbers. So therefore, this general limit does not exist. Just just to note here, the one-sided limits. can exist while the general limit does not. Okay, that's important to know. All right, so again, consider this function, okay? And let's find the limit as x increases without bound. Okay, so now we're looking as x goes to infinity. X gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, gets larger and larger and larger, okay? So you can plug in uh, the numerical approach to this. So this, there's only one way to approach this, right? X is going positive, 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 positive. So X is increasing without bound. So when you have it as, as X goes to infinity or negative infinity, you just can do it numerically by picking values, you know, from one side, you can't go from the, you can't, you can only go from the left here, right? Like you can't go from values above infinity. So if you look here, 
you can see what's happening. It, as you plug in larger and larger numbers, it looks like as x increases without bound, it goes to 3. And again, you can observe this, right? So as x increases without bound, so x is going larger and larger and larger, our graph is shooting down and down, and it's staying. It looks like it's getting closer and closer and closer and closer to the value 3. Okay. And you can do this too, right? Like just as a follow-up, find the limit as x goes to negative infinity of this function f of x. And, you, and look, as x decreases without bound, where does it look like our function is going? Looks like our function's going to 3 again as well. Okay, class. So this was just a quick introduction to um, limits. I will follow this up with additional lectures as needed with more examples. Um, also, you should definitely check out the, the videos um, in the publisher in, in my math lab. And also the textbook has some great examples. But as always, I'm, I'm here for questions.